Can you troubleshoot what happened to my copter? I'm going to tell you what I think. If you haven't watched the original video, go ahead and watch it and make your best guess, your best explanation as to what happened. Why take all the fun out of it by just listening to what I have to say? <laughs> Who would do such a thing? <laughs> there I was flying along and all of a sudden the copter just tumbled. Now, you can see as it goes to tumble that the back left arm drops. And the most obvious thing that you would think is that I had a desync. The motor desynced, the arm dropped, and the copter tumbled. There are a couple reasons why this probably isn't so. First of all, when you get a desync like that, you usually get a more rapid tumble. The copter doesn't just sort of gracefully fall to the ground like it did here. Uh, it, it, the other motors are spinning at full when the one motor rapidly stops, and the copter tends to sort of do a, what they call it, a death spiral, some people call it. But there's more obvious things that tell us that there's more going on here than just a motor desyncing. If I were to do the exercise that I told you to do and say, what observations do I make as this happens? One thing I notice is that the OSD powers down, and then right here, you can see it powers back up again. So we know for a fact that the board lost power. So then we could guess that the issue is that we had a brownout. Did we have a brownout? And as a result of the brownout, the motors shut down and the copter tumbled? That would be consistent with this kind of graceful sort of slow tumble. Uh, a fail safe could cause this where all the motors shut down at once or maybe the board browning out and the motors shut down at once and we get this kind of tumble. But if we look at the actual order in which things happen, the copter begins to tumble before the board shuts down and browns out. And again, if we go back to what I told you about making the dispassionate and objective observation of events in the order that they happen, what we see is that I'm flying along, everything is fine, the OSD is fine, the copter kind of jerks and then tumbles, and it's only after the copter hits the ground that we see the board brown out. So the most likely explanation for why the board browned out is that it has something to do with the crash, and I'm certainly going to want to check my power supply to the board to see if there's anything loose or anything like that. But that doesn't explain why the copter tumbled, because the OSD shows us that the board had power right up to the moment that it, it began to tumble. But there's one more piece of information that gives us an additional deeper insight into what really happened here and really gives away the game. And I only noticed it when I started making these videos and watching this playback on slow motion almost on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Maybe you've noticed it too as I've been showing it to you repeatedly and here uh, it would be easy to miss. What it is is that the OSD goes to the statistics summary screen immediately after the arm drops. And the only thing that will cause that is a disarm or maybe a fail-safe. I'm not sure about that. My first thought was, well, did I just disarm when I noticed something happening? And no, no, it happens way too quickly, but I'll confirm it for you here with the playback. Notice uh, the moment that the arm dips and the moment that the OSD goes to the statistics summary screen, and then notice how long it takes for me to hit the disarm switch. You can hear it go click. Precise. Oh! You can see there that I could not have disarmed as fast as that statistics screen appears. Uh, the statistics screen appears almost immediately after the arm drops. It takes me about uh, a second and a quarter, 1.25 seconds, to hit the disarm switch from the moment the arm first drops. But there's something even more interesting, and that is that if you watch carefully, the copter goes back to being armed before it hits the ground and browns out. Watch here. Right there. Now that we have the observations, let's start thinking about some possible explanations and we can assess how they fit with the observations. Was this crash caused by the flight controller losing power and browning out? We do know that it rebooted, we do know that it lost power, but that happened after the problem event occurred, so that was not the cause. Was this caused by some kind of problem with the motors or the ESCs? such as a slipping prop or a desync or damaged motor, damaged ESC, etc. I think we have to conclude that the answer to that is no, because it's hard to imagine a scenario where that causes the copter to show the OSD statistics screen. And if there's one thing 
that really points us towards what seems like the, the most likely cause of an answer, it is the fact that the OSD went to that statistic screen uh, just before the crash. What could cause that? I would have to dig through the source code to figure out exactly what could cause that, and I'm not really <laughs> qualified to do that. But I did reach out to someone who is qualified to do that, Nathan Soy, who is, uh, he works on the Betaflight OSD. And uh, so if anyone should know, he should. And to make a long story short, what makes the OSD show the statistic screen is the copter going into the disarmed state, it going out of the armed state. So we know that the copter left the armed state, and that would certainly explain why it stopped flying and crashed. Well, what could have caused the copter to enter the disarmed state? That's a tricky one. We know that I didn't flip the disarmed switch to, to cause that to happen. The next most likely thing to cause the copter to disarm would be a failsafe, but I have my failsafe set up to hold throttle and to go to center channels. And so in the event of a stage one failsafe, the copter would freeze. It would I would have lost authority on the sticks, and I can tell you that didn't happen. I had authority on the sticks up to the moment that the arm dropped and the copter crashed. We also know that the copter didn't go into a stage two failsafe because after a stage two failsafe, it will not rearm again without, uh, you, you, have to, you can have to flip the arm switch like two times and then it'll rearm. But we saw the copter go back into the arm state in the, very, very briefly after suddenly disarming. So the best explanation that we could come up with is that it was some kind of a failsafe, but it certainly doesn't seem to fit the a full description of a failsafe because for the copter to disarm, we would have had to get from stage one into stage two failsafe. So unfortunately, this is not going to be one of the cases where at the end of the can you troubleshoot, I tell you what the answer turned out to be, and we find out if you were right or wrong. But I actually like these better because a lot of times whether you're right or wrong is as much a matter of luck as anything else, and it's the quality of your analysis that really matters. My best guess as to what caused this is that this was an RF failsafe. Uh, I was out of receivers when I built this copter, and I took the little mini receiver off of a broken QX90, and I put it on this copter. And my best guess is that the reduced range caused by the pretty mediocre antenna on that receiver caused me to have a radio failsafe. This does not fully fit the characteristics of a radio failsafe, but that's still the best explanation that I can think of. And the next step that I will be doing is to put a, a proper full-size receiver on this copter and see if this happens again. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.